With the ferocity of a hurricane, the storm swept in from the Atlantic, cutting a swathe of destruction across the southern half of the country. On land, thousands were drowned by the rising floodwaters or killed by falling trees and masonry. But it was at sea where its full violence was felt. The Northumberland was one of several warships that had returned home from the Mediterranean. It was sheltering in the Downs, along with other warships of the Channel Fleet and many merchantmen. The Downs, an anchorage off the southeast coast of Kent, is protected to the west by the land and to the east by the Goodwin Sands. When the storm hit, four warships, the Stirling Castle, Mary, Restoration and the Northumberland were driven onto the Goodwins, an extensive area of treacherous sandbanks known by mariners as the Ship Swallower. Unable to free themselves, the four ships were swamped by mountainous seas and were lost. Over 800 seamen drowned, including the entire crews of the Restoration and the Northumberland. Notorious throughout history as a graveyard of wrecks, these warships were engulfed by the sands. This is the story of how one of them is being revealed. The Northumberland. During the summers of 2018 and 2021, exploratory dives were carried out on the Northumberland by a team of divers led by maritime archaeologist Dan Pascoe. These expeditions, interspersed with annual geophysical surveys, have revealed the structure of the hull, along with guns and other artefacts, as their protective blanket of sand has been swept away by currents. This is, however, a double-edged sword. It has given the archaeologists the chance to explore the wreck, record their findings and recover artefacts. But the remains of the warship, which served in the Navy of King Charles II and Queen Anne, are now laid bare to damage from marine organisms as well as the forces of the sea. It's a really exciting site to dive at the moment. Sands have shifted away, but it's left this wreck mound and when we approach it, when we shot the site, we approach it from the northeast and we land on the seabed at 19 and a half metres. Making our way along the shot line, along the bottom, suddenly the site begins to slope upwards and we climb up onto this wreck mound. On the top of the wreck mound, we can see the guns. Now, this is a 70-gun ship. We've probably seen about 10 of them, maybe a dozen. Some of these guns have got their carriages attached to them. But really, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's 70 guns and we're only seeing 10. As you sort of work your way down the mound, you see other artifacts coming out of the slope. We've got copper cauldrons. The copper cauldron is almost a metre wide. It's quite big. But then we've got really kind of fragile artifacts, which include this really beautiful onion bottle. Absolutely perfect and complete. So it would have carried wine that the officers were the drunk. They would have had lots of these on board the ship. But this just goes to show the potential, how for 300 years, the sands have smothered the wreck, protecting these artifacts. 
And now, as the sand migrates away, they're beginning to uncover these. And it's, this is why it's important that we're now coming back to the site, uh, monitoring it, recording it, and recovering these fragile objects before they, um, they get broken. The site is being fished, it's trawled, there's lots of fishing net. These items get easily broken when they're on the surface. Well, you can tell these items are on the surface because they're all covered in um, barnacles. So that's your evidence that these are exposed, vulnerable, um, fragile artefacts. We've been extremely fortunate that um, our research is being funded by Historic England and, and they've funded this whole week's diving. But not just that, they've been uh, funding us to carry out regular monitoring. So we've been conducting geophysical surveys since 2017 building up a much better understanding of how the site is changing. The diving side of it enables us to divers go down and ground truth those anomalies that we're seeing on the, on the geophysics. So now we can report back to Historic England and say all of the new things that we're seeing, um, how the site is, uh, is growing and we can confirm that, not just through the geophysics, but through, through the diving. So the next stage now is to hopefully take progress the project onto a more um, intrusive methods because we know that the site is uncovering and while we're away, material is going to be lost and we don't want that. We want to get to the material before it uh, degrades through exposure. So the next phase will be to do strategic or targeted excavation because um, now we want to understand, we know we've got a big site, we know we've got a depth of stratigraphy that has the potential to hold extensive um, areas of a, of a shipwreck and now we want to record that material using various methods, photogrammetry, drawings, film, uh, photographs, uh, because we know we've only got a limited amount of time while those sands are away from the wreck. When the visibility arrived on site, it was like diving a totally different site, we could actually see it. And I can remember when we hit the seabed, we hit this kind of flat, sandy, clay area. I knew we were low down, close to the bedrock, and we started heading along the ground line, and all of a sudden the sand starts to slope upwards. And we're not going over a sand dune. This is the wreck mound. This is the shipwreck. And we've got at least three and a half metres of a depth of stratigraphy. That is three and a half metres of wreck material. We've got cannons on top of that. Those cannons, if there wasn't anything beneath them, would be lying on the bedrock. So we know there is a huge amount of the ship holding those guns up. We know we've got intact areas of the ship surviving. And those areas are holding an unbelievable amount of artefacts. Everyday artefacts that you would find on a warship, from weaponry to domestic items to rigging to personal possessions. This is the moment, though. This is the moment that we have to do something about it because it's exposed and it's only going to get more exposed. Slowly, this wreck mound is going to reduce. So this is why we need to react quickly. Thanks to Historic England, who have been funding this research, it's enabling us to react quickly. All this work that we've been doing since 2017 is enabling us to plan uh, strategically and do something really uh, that has a great impact on preserving or at least recording this uh, site of the Northumberland. Diving on the Goodwins is a challenge, even for the most experienced. The site is swept by strong currents which can shift dramatically during a dive. Discarded fishing nets and rope that have caught on the wreck bring additional hazards. Maritime archaeologist Rodrigo Ortiz takes up the story. The diving conditions were less than ideal for the first three days. So to help us out, we used a tracking system that was basically having a beacon on the back of our diver, and that would be sending a signal, sound signal, to the boat, and that allowed the supervisor to orientate us around the wreck site. Also, while we were in position, the supervisor can record the position of certain artifacts that we were interested in. So that really helped us navigate around the wreck site when we had zero visibility. As a maritime archaeologist, this site really makes me excited. This is basically one of your dreams since you were a kid, trying to come to a site where you have 
70 guns, you have everything there. You, massive mount, a, a pile of artifacts. This is a very exciting place to be in. The Goodwin Sands is one of the best places in the world to come in as a maritime archaeologist. Dan Pascoe and his team are in a race against time. The further exposure of the Northumberland will lead to the loss of structures and artefacts, which would give us a vital insight into life on board a ship of King Charles II's Restoration Navy. So the shipwreck has several life cycles, or periods when it's buried and then periods when it's exposing. And we're in a period when the sands are migrating away, exposing the wreck. And this is when the site is at its most vulnerable state because it doesn't have the smothering effect of the sands that creates this anaerobic environment that preserves it. This material is now vulnerable to the physical and biological environment. So it's important that we're doing this work now and that we can make a strategic plan for the near future. We can't wait two, three years down the line because we're going to we're going to lose a lot of um, ship structure. We're going to lose a lot of small finds like the onion bottle. Um, there's human remains on the site that are going to wash, wash away. It's really important that we, we plan for the, for the next season and the season beyond and do something really meaningful to, to save the material that's being exposed. <laughs> 